Hey, Barry, guess what? You saw the title of today's video, right? We're going to the sky, Barry. You got wings. Time to fly, man! <laughs> I just chuck Barry into the air, crashes through the ceiling. Onwards and upwards, you magnificent brick man! Alright, so anyway, uh, yes, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching and Barry here. Oh, update! Regarding the berry plushies, before I even continue, I'll just say it now before I forget. Um, I know originally I said that the berry plushies were probably going to come out somewhere around March or April. Uh, it seems like it's going to be earlier than that, which is good. Uh, I'm probably going to have an update about this next week, so just hold tight on that, uh, and we'll see how this is going to go. But you might be able to get a berry plushie in your own home uh, very soon, so we'll see how that goes. Don't worry, Barry. The plushie, your, uh, your plan to take over the world is slowly approaching its final stages. Don't worry, Barry. I'll, I'll tell them, okay? But yeah, anyway, today's video, we're going to be tackling that age-old question. It's been around forever. Uh, is the Thousand Sunny going to be modified into a giant emperor penguin, which is then going to be launched into the sky via the knock-up stream somewhere in the New World, where the Straw Hats are going to land on the White White Sea, sail to another sky island, have a grand adventure, which may or may not involve Luffy punching out another giant lightning deity. Um, there's been a, I know it's been a theory that's been around for a while. I'm sorry I'm just tackling it now, okay? Okay, are the Straw Hats going to go to another Sky Island, because you understand that is such an interesting premise, right? Whether or not you like the Sky Pia arc, let me know down below if you did or not. I know there's a lot of conjecture with that particular arc. Uh, it is a long arc, I believe before Dress Rosa, it was the longest arc in One Piece, uh, you know, and then people have different opinions on it and everything like that, but regardless of whether or not you cared about Sky Pia directly, like, you know, them facing off against the priests and Enel and everything like that, or maybe you weren't really invested with the war of the Shandorians or the backstory with Noland and uh, Kalgara. If you weren't invested in that, that's fine. But you have to understand, the premise of sailing into the sky on a sea of clouds to mystical faraway lands that have amazing new geography, because geography is everything, and all these different kinds of people, I mean, that is fascinating, right? Um, of course, Nami got sent to Weatheria, which is floating on the White Sea. That's a little bit of a different kind of sky island, uh, you know, where it's Skypea, you know, Godland Skypea that Enel rule, ruled over for six years. Uh, that was kind of like a permanent settlement with Upper Yard and everything. Weatheria was like floating on the clouds and their residents were like wizards that were there to like study the weather phenomenon. So they were like basically a mobile weather base like traveling around, right? So with that being the case though, I mean, we saw one example of that with Upper Yard and Angel Island and everything. Angel Island's not there anymore and the Heaven's Gate and that like that giant door and everything and then the crab or the lobster that had to take the straw hats up. So we saw something like that, but then we saw something completely different with Weatheria. So you have to understand, there's probably a whole slew of different kinds of sky islands up there, right? Um, it might not even be possible they're all the same, like, like, island cloud. It was stated it was very, very unusual for Earth or Verth to exist in the sky. Upper Yard was considered sacred ground for that reason, because half a Jaya got blasted up. But just because it's rare doesn't mean that's the only one. It just means it doesn't happen very often. There could very well be another Sky Island out there in One Piece that's made out of Verth that was the same deal. You know, a knock upstream blast in an island. It happened with Jaya, it could happen again, right? And I can imagine Oda, when he originally came up with One Piece, and it's like, okay, it's going to be about pirates sailing around this crazy ocean having adventures, right? And you know one of the first things Oda probably thought of is like, I want to have them sail into the sky. That's so fantastical. That's so amazing, right? You know, to like, it's like a dream to blast into the sky and sail on a sea of clouds and have an epic adventure there in the sky, right? So I, I imagine that was one of the first things Oda wanted to do. And then he did Skypea right after Alabasta, fairly early on in the story, certainly early on in the Grand Line adventure. So, you know, the Straw Hats go up into the sky and they have their little adventure. Luffy punches out Eneru and then, uh, you know, they descend via Octopus Balloon as you you do, and then they just kind of land, and they just kind of continue their adventure on the Blue Sea, right? Sky Islands are mentioned throughout the story, uh, like a Rouge taking refuge in the balloon terminal, and Kaido jumping off of one, uh, you know, then there's the whole thing with Weatheria, of course, and Nami, and, you know, Sky Islands are referenced. Bellamy mentioned he went to Sky Island, you know, to get the pillar and came back down, so they're mentioned, but are the Straw Hats ever going to go to one again? Now, I can understand immediately you don't want to rehash premises, right? You don't want to have the same premise 
premise with they go to a sky island and then there's a figure there that's like, oh, they're pretending to be a god and then Luffy has to do the same thing all over again. We kind of did that, right? But that's what I mean. Like, there could be a bunch of different kinds of islands that are up there. Um, I don't know. Like, let me just throw out this idea. What if uh, the knock-up stream blasted an island up there with a giant mountain or a volcano or something? So now you have a volcano in the sky that's spewing out clouds like marshmallows. I'm just throwing out ideas here. Sky Island Marshmallow Island. It, it's One Piece. That could exist. Don't throw that off the table yet, right? But they could have different kinds of geography and stuff and completely different cultures, just like how the culture of Weatheria was very different from the culture of Skypea, right? Um, there was also Bricka, but Bricka was a place that was eliminated by Eneru. After attaining his Goro Goro Nomi powers, Eneru completely, much like he did with uh, Angel Island, with Raiga, he completely incinerated uh, Bricka, so we don't know anything about that place. But from we understand, from the little we understand about that place, it was more of a warrior kind of nation, sort of more Norse, Viking kind of deal, right? And we know the priests came from there, and Aruj, with the way his wings are angled, Barry as well, Barry is a Brickin because he's a brick that's oh i get that i get that i get it barry it took me a little while to understand that joke but i got it right so aruge is a brickin as well he's a monk he's the mad monk but he's also definitely really strong kind of more of a warrior than the other kind of like the skypeans we saw on angel island like conus or pagaya of course you know aruge and the priests and enel all being from bricka they were much stronger i think they have like even before eneru ate the goro goro no me i mean he looked pretty buff he looked like he trained his life in combat and stuff like that that. Same thing with the priests as well. So that was probably more of a warrior kind of cast, which is where Bricka was like, you know, and then it got destroyed. Maybe that's the reason Eneru destroyed it, because he was raised there, and then after he attained, uh, attained the Goro Goro no Mi, maybe he tried to rule over Bricka, and they were like, you know, pulling up arms against him. Like, they rejected him, and he's like, oh, if you reject me, then you will fall. And then he just used his Raiga to destroy them, and he also didn't want competition. And this might have been, maybe uh, Aruj was tried to be recruited Rooted into the priests, and he just said, screw that, and he left, and he went down to the Blue Sea, or maybe Aruj left before Enaru did anything, because I think Aruj is, like, in his 40s, and Aru, um, he ruled over Skypea for six years, and then he was defeated two years ago, so that's eight years ago, that's when Aruj took up residence at Skypea, probably a few years before that, he destroyed Bricka, so yeah, th that could work, maybe Aruj would have left, maybe in his teen years, in his 20s, he just decided to leave and make a life for himself on the Blue Sea and become a pirate, whatever, we don't know the whole story with Rouge. Right now, Rouge is probably the most mysterious out of all of the uh, supernovas in terms of his backstory. We just don't know much about him, right? Uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So here's something else, though. As I'm mentioning warrior kind of, uh, yeah, warrior nation that Bricka probably most likely was, um, what about Elbaf? What about Elbaf? Okay. Well, we've only seen a little bit of Elbaf so far, but we know that's the place where the giants come from. We know it's heavily based on things like Norse mythology. Uh, Loki is the prince of the giants, of course. So there's ties to that right there. I'm thinking that the king of uh, Elbaf is going to be Othin, you know, the Allfather and all that stuff. Something else we know about Elbaf is the tree. Yidris, yeah, Yidrisil, yeah, Yidrisil tree, the god tree, right? The world tree, yeah. Okay, so in Norse mythology, it's a tree that holds all the different realms and everything on it, okay? Now, it's probably not going to be the same exact way in One Piece, of course, but we see Elbaf, we see the island, and we definitely see that tree off to the right there. We see it there. It's a huge tree. I would imagine Elbaf, considering it's the place all the giants are from, Elbaf is a huge island. Like, maybe one of the biggest we've ever seen in One Piece. Maybe it might be straight up, like, close to a continent. Or maybe by our standards, it would be a continent from the giant standards. It's just, like, a really big island or whatever. But it's huge, right? You see the mountains everywhere and everything we only saw we only saw a small snippet of that place in big mom's uh, flashback remember that we saw a single shoreline where big mom was dropped off by her parents and then we saw one village where Oimo and Kashi are hanging out, and we saw uh, the Lamb's House that Mother Caramel ran. We saw one village, one giant village. They talked about Loki and, uh, you know, the, the royalty of the giants. I'm imagining there's another town, maybe it's in the, like a big giant city in the center of Elbath, and there's a huge giant castle. Imagine that, a giant castle. Not a giant castle, I mean, it is a giant castle, but a castle full of giants. That is giant, right? Okay. Then, in the center of the island, I'm picturing this giant tree. I know, I'm using giant a lot, but it's Elbaf, right? Okay, imagine this tree 
is so damn tall. It's even taller than, like, Zunisha. And going with One Piece logic here, that tree might extend into, like, the exosphere. It might go beyond the realms of the planet, like the freaking, uh, the world tree in Hunter Hunter or whatever, like the true ones from the Dark Continent. Like, they just go that high, right? And considering from what we know about the atmosphere and space in One Piece, apparently you can breathe in it, so I guess plant life could grow there. Why not, right? It's One Piece. Um... But what I'm also thinking is going along with the logic of the world tree uh, in, in Norse mythology, how it kind of holds all the different realms, it would be crazy if that tree, maybe the roots go all the way down underwater so there could be another island on the seafloor. Fishman Island was the most prominent one, but there are other settlements on the seafloor, right? We kind of explored that a little bit in Hachan Seafloor Stroll. Like, there's a whole race of fishmen and merfolk and just, like, fish themselves that have little communities down there on the seafloor. Like, that's confirmed. That's a thing. So maybe the roots of that tree go all the way down there, and then that's, like, that realm, the ocean realm, and then it goes up, and then it hits the ocean level where Elbaf is. And, and then you go up even higher. And there are actual clouds, island clouds, that are swirling around that tree. So the tree just keeps extending as like a pillar, kind of like Giant Jack did when they got to the upper parts of Upper Yard. Giant Jack was kind of piercing through various island clouds. That's where the golden belfry was at the top. Kind of pierced by the, the, the beanstalk. Same deal with that, except a giant tree. So, you technically don't even need the knock-up stream at that point. You could just climb the tree, right? Get up the tree high enough, and then there's a giant island cloud up there, maybe in the White Sea, and you climb up even higher, and then the White White Sea, there's other islands that have communities all around it. And it might be like you don't get to the canopy of that tree until you get to the very, very top. Like at the White White Sea, there's it goes up even higher, and then there's like a giant canopy of leaves and stuff. And there's other branches that, you know, branch off on the way down. Down, but like then the canopies of it at the huge like at the size on the very top that would be cool right just picture that kind of idea right and because let's say it's still part of Elbaf let's see giants live up there their culture might be a little different from the giants on Elbaf but giants even live up there right and so that would make things a little bit different from the culture that we saw at Angel Island and Upper Yard and everything Eneru obviously wouldn't be involved in this or anything like that right he's on the moon he's even higher than the tree right but I'm just throwing out this idea right Straw Hat's land at Elbaf and they see this giant tree that just keeps extending up and they can't even see the top. Ma imagine that. Usopp takes out his binoculars and he's like, man, I can't even see the top of that thing. That thing's got to stretch thousands and thousands of meters into the sky, right? And then they meet Loki, the prince, or they meet Othin or whoever. They talk to the giants and they're like, oh yes, the god tree or the world tree. It extends all the way up into the sky. People say there's even uh, uh, giants that live up there. And then the Strats will be like, oh, well, we went to a sky island. It's like, oh, really? Well, maybe you can go back up there again, right? And there might be an easier way to get up there this time. They don't have to rely on the knock-up stream. I feel, honestly, I feel at this point in the story with all the stuff that Frankie is capable of doing, I don't, I don't see any reason why Frankie can't build, like, airplane thrusters on the Sunny, right? Like, that seems something feasible for him to do. Like, just make, I know flight technology is limited in One Piece, um, but like, like I said, like, if you took like blueprints on how to build an airplane like in our world and you gave them to Frankie in the One Piece world if you isekai them into One Piece Frankie would be able to build that I feel like he would be able to he'd be able to like well I don't know what the hell this weird fuel is like this petroleum so what is I don't know what they use in planes I'm I'm assuming they don't just you know use gasoline in planes but you know what I mean like jet fuel I don't know what that is I run on cola I'll modify this to run on cola so he just attaches these two giant thrusters turbines on the side of the sunny all right according to this this is gonna take up a lot of dr pepper but we should be good and it just like flies the sunny straight up I feel like if, if if frankie had the blueprints for that he would be able to do that right i don't see any reason why not right um but let's say he couldn't do that, or let's say he can't do the Emperor Penguin. Well, no, he could still do the Emperor Penguin modification, right? Uh, the knock-up stream, right? Now, 
I know we think of the knock upstream as a very specific localized thing that happens off the shore of Jaya, and it happens there. According to uh, according to Cricket, it happens a few times a month. Um, you know, and there it varies in terms of size and scale. Obviously, the knock upstream that the Straw Hats used to get to Skypea was much more. Uh, it was what much weaker than the one that blasted half a Jaya into the sky. So it varies in terms of size and scale and all that stuff, right? But Cricket also explained how the knock upstream actually happens. It's not a mystery current, as Luffy would say. No, it's like there are pockets, you know, uh, underneath the ocean floor filled with air and stuff. And I think there's like volcanic vents underneath it that heats it up, right? So geothermal vents that like heat up this pocket. And then cold ocean water filters in, the pressure builds, and then kaboom! It goes straight up, okay? Um... That is a thing that I'm sure happens in multiple places in One Piece, considering how big the world is, and most of it is ocean and sea. There's probably a few locations where that happens. Uh, maybe it's not to the, to the degree where it fires the current straight up. Maybe there's weaker uh, streams where it's just like, pfft, you know, every, every few weeks, every few months, it's just like, pfft. And then that's it, right? But you have to imagine, especially on the Grand Line, there might be other locations where that knock-up stream occurs, right? And we even saw that in Stampede. And I know in Stampede it's non-canon, but um, I think the possibility that another, uh, you know, pocket under the ocean could heat up and then ocean water could filter in and then it launches a current into the sky, I don't think that's too ridiculous, right? So there's another way the Straw Hats could get up to the sky. And of course, let's not forget, this is, this is probably one of my favorite just tangentially mention things in One Piece. I don't know why I find this so fascinating, but this happens every now and then where Oda will throw in just a random thing in the background, and it's when Gonfall was talking to the Straw Hats about how to get to the sky. Uh, remember when Gonfall saved them, and he was like, well, I demand, well, I'll help you out with this whistle. That first one's free, but you got to pay me some X tolls. The Straw Hats have no idea what an X toll is. And Gonfall's confused. And he's like, well, you came from the Blue Sea, right? And he's like, yeah. He's like, so you had to have passed an island or two on the way up here to get to this point. They should have told you all about X tolls. You should have had the transfer and everything. And they're like, no, we took the knock up stream to get up here. We just got here. And they're like, holy crap, you took the knock up stream. That's really dangerous. And so uh, Gonfall waves his, his uh, fee and he just gives them the whistle. But he's like, there is a place called High West, the summit of High West. And he's like, usually when people go from the blue sea to the sky, that's the route they take. Now, it is very dangerous because it is, while it is guaranteed you'll get to the sky, you know, probably a few of your crew, more, more than a few of your crew would probably have died along the way. I don't exactly know what that implies. If the route is just so dangerous, you know, people fall off the boat or whatever on the way up there, or, you know, the G-forces get people if it's just going up really fast or something, or if there's something else going on. Like, if you take the summit of High West, you get to the Sky Island, and it's just like, welcome to Sky Islands. Thank well, welcome to the White Sea, Blue Sea Dwellers. Thank you. Uh, in order to pass, you must sacrifice your crew. I don't know what that entails, but the way Bellamy talked about it, he lost quite a bit of his crew along the way when he went to the sky because Bellamy didn't take the knock up stream he went by some other method so if the knock up stream is one method and the summit of high west is another method it goes to reason there's probably other ways to get to the skies as well um with area it seems with area kind of floats on the uh you know the clouds but they have those little bubble ships that can kind of descend and go back up whenever they want so they have a method of doing it obviously the way Nami got there was unique Kuma used his pawpaw for Fruit, but hey, I guess if you have the pawpaw fruit, you can go to a sky island whenever you want, right? You kind of go anywhere you want with that fruit, right? Um, so there's probably other ways to get up there. Some of them may be safer than the knock-up stream in High West. Uh, something else to keep in mind, I have no idea what that entails, the summit of High West. All I will say is that the Straw Hats are in the New World right now, and the New World borders the North Blue and the West Blue. So maybe what Gonfall was talking about was quite literally a large mountain in the West Blue 
or maybe near the West Blue in the New World or whatever that you can sail up and then you can reach the sky. And Bellamy did say he eventually went to Sky Island. And the next time we see Bellamy was in Dressrosa, which was, you know, you know, around the West Blue as well in the New World. So who knows? Um, or maybe Gonfall, maybe the, the name High West is just in general, like on the Western Hemisphere of the planet. That's where this location is. Some people have thought it might have meant Reverse Mountain, but I don't think so. Maybe High West is located on Elbaf. Who knows? Maybe on top of, there's a giant tree coming out of the middle of the island. Maybe there's also a huge mountain on Elbaf, and that's how you get to the sky. Who knows? Add them both together, because that is something that Oda would definitely do. Oda mentioned something randomly, you know, 700 chapters ago, and then all of a sudden it becomes a plot point. Remember when Sanji just casually mentioned, this was also in the Jai arc, Sanji just casually mentions out of nowhere, oh yeah, guys, I come from the North Blue. I grew up there. And then it was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then they go back to talking about Noland. Um, that was just something random that was dropped, but then eventually ended up becoming something really, really relevant, right? Um, you know, the Straw Hat crew, another reason why I would love to see them go into the sky is that Frankie and Brooke and Jean Bay they've never been to a Sky Island before, at least not in the canon of the story or anything. Uh, and I'd love to see them hanging out on a Sky Island and see what their take was on it. You know, the, the Straw Hats, you know, up until Robin, they've been to a Sky Island. They've seen these places before, right? But I want to see Frankie and Brooke and Jinbei's reaction to it. I want to see Brooke coming up with a song about the sky. I want to see Frankie losing his shit over all the different kinds of dial technology. Maybe different Sky Islands have access to different kinds of dials. Right? You know, that there was certain dials that Usopp traded for while he was on, uh, you know, Upper Yard, but they might only have a certain amount because those dials are the remnants of, like, there were sea creatures that lived in the clouds that abandoned their shells, and that's the origin of dials. Stands to reason maybe different uh, shelled species lived over here because Skypea is located on the other side of the planet where the Straw Hats are right now. So on the other side of the planet, there's whole different kinds of creatures that live in the clouds, different kinds of cloud fi uh, sky fish and cloud fish and all that stuff. And there might be different kinds of dials that we've never seen before. So that might help out Usopp's arsenal. And then Frankie might discover these. And he's like, wow, these are pretty cool. I think it was mentioned... Uh, there was the episode where right after Frankie joined, he was modifying the, the waiver to make the Shiro Mokuba one, right? And he was like, man, I could barely understand anything about the propulsion system, but, uh, I made this horse, you know, it could, it could, uh, it could work on land now, right? And so Nami was a little upset by it, but it, it works, it works the same as it always did, um... While the Straw Hats were on um, Skypea, Pagaya kind of mentioned um, that, like, yeah, there's factories that make island clouds or the clouds that we use in everyday life, like, for furniture and stuff. Um, there's probably also, there's dial shops. Like, there was one scene where Luffy kind of randomly ended up in a dial shop, and he's like, oh, this is where they sell those dials. Okay, and then he just left. I want to see that explored more. I want to see Frankie and Usopp walking into a dial shop and, like, wow, how do these work? And then it's like, well, they will find out about how that works and, like, all the different kinds that are out there. I'm sure Oda's come up with some new ideas involving this concept in, like, the over a decade since we've been to Sky Island. Almost two decades, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then Jinbei. Jinbei as a fishman. There's a sea in the... I mean, there's a sea in the sky. That's something interesting, I think. Would his fishman karate and his fishman jujitsu work in the cloud sea? Picture that! Picture they go back into the sky. They're sailing around. They have to fight against some enemy in the sky and Jinbei's like, well, I don't know if this will work but I'll give it a shot. Water heart! And he makes a giant cloud dragon that, like, goes to, like, attack the enemy with the water currents or something. There's possibility here. You definitely have that, right? Oda could definitely do this in a way that I think ties into Elbaf, so you're not having two separate arcs. You're not having a Elbaf arc and then a Sky Island 2.0 arc. You're having the Straw Hats land at Elbaf, meet the giants, find out about the tree, go up the tree, go into a Sky Island. You have little moments with Frankie and Brooke and Jean Bay and everything, and then they fight against, I don't know, some evil giant or something, and then they defeat him, knock him off the tree or whatever, and then they go back down, and then they continue their adventure. But that'd be a cool way to tie it all in. I think that can definitely work, 100%. Right, um, and plus Barry has wings, so that that needs to be added on there too, right? All right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, that's that's just that's today's video pretty much. I just wanted to do that video really quick here and just talk about that um, because, like, I'm. 
I wasn't a huge fan of Sky Island. I mean, I don't I don't dislike it or anything, but there's a lot of other like better story arcs in One Piece, especially since, you know, it comes right after Alabasta, which was amazing, and then later on right after Sky Islands and after Long Ring Longland, we have uh, Water 7 and Any's Lobby, which I think is regarded by many like to be one of if not the best arcs of One Piece. Uh Any's Lobby. I mean, that's really up there. And Sky Island is good. It just it really can't compete in my opinion, right? Um, so here's your chance to do it again, and do it with a different angle, and I think Oda could, I think he could get it done before the end of the story, definitely. But anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think about that below. Uh, this will be Teching 101, signing out. Later, everybody.